More local news now. Two teenagers are behind bars tonight arrested in connection to a shooting. Oshkosh police say 19 year old Daniel Billings and an 18 year old man were arrested in connection to a July 27th shooting at an apartment on Bowen Street. Police say Billings is charged with first degree reckless injury and armed burglary. They say the 18 year old is accused of first degree intentional homicide, armed robbery and carrying a concealed weapon. This 21 year old man from Milwaukee has been arrested on warrants that include first degree reckless homicide. Oshkosh police say DeMontana Jennings was wanted in connection to the murder of a nine year old girl killed by a stray bullet back in May. Jennings was arrested at Menominee Park after officers found two vehicles in the park after it had closed. Manitowoc man is in custody after he allegedly burglarized a home. Police say the 26 year old man was found with a bag containing stolen items from a home along Rankin Street early this morning. Officers say the suspect was also riding a bike stolen from that same home. The suspect is charged with burglary, resisting arrest and felony bail jumping. Well, it's time now for your first forecast. Hot and humid weather returns to northeast Wisconsin. Meteorologist Michael Fish joins us now. Fish, does that mean rain's on the way? Oh, well, it's this summer. Of course there's rain on the way, Cassandra. Yes, and I'm watching it already moving into the state. See the low pressure right here? Here's our first batch working its way closer and closer to Marquette, Green Lake counties, and Fond du Lac. We'll have to see how it holds together. Watch a couple little lightning bolts with it. That would be our first round this evening. And then behind that, a little bit more starting to work its way. And in Skycast, showing some of these rounds of rain slowly working working their way in as the night goes on. So just be aware there is rain on the way. And if you hear a couple rumbles of thunder, don't be surprised. But right now it's pretty quiet for us. 72 in Ocano, 71 in Manitowoc. That's some lake cooling going on, keeping us a little bit more comfortable. But yes, it's still plenty humid out there. So here comes the rain, maybe a couple of thunderstorms as we head through the night. 67. Cassandra, I'll time this out even more for tomorrow and take a sneak peek at the weekend coming up. All right, thanks, Fish. Governor Scott Walker joining leaders in the Green Bay area today. They were discussing the proposed Foxconn deal. The company wants to build a multi-billion dollar plant in the southern part of the state. NBC 26's Megan Lowry is live in the Green Bay newsroom with more on what he said today. Megan. Cassandra, before the Taiwanese tech company brings their plant to southern Wisconsin, the state legislature must pass a $3 billion incentives bill. Today, Governor Walker met with business, education and government leaders in Green Bay. They discussed where the company plans to build and how it could impact northeast Wisconsin and also how local education centers will need to adapt in producing potential workers. Part of the legislation allows us to have uh, staff that run point on this to make sure that we're working with the private sector, with construction, with the supply chain, as well as with the talent pipeline, which is really K-12, through apprenticeship programs, technical colleges, private colleges and universities, as well as the University of Wisconsin system. The incentives bill cleared a committee vote this week by an eight to five vote along party lines. There have been several changes, including a plan to send $20 million to train workers. The state assembly will take up the $3 billion incentive package for Foxconn tomorrow. Reporting live in the Green Bay newsroom, Megan Lowry, NBC 26. Thanks, Megan. Tonight, the final hurdle to get started on building a new expo center on the Veterans Arena site is taking place. The Brown County Board will vote on implementing a 0.5% sales tax and a hotel room tax to help pay for the new expo center, expand the county jail, repair roads, and more. Just last night, Green Bay City Council voted 10 to 2 in favor of the taxes. Also on the agenda from Green Bay Council last night, they considered a $10 wheel tax, which was voted down 5 to 7. The council voted 7 to 5 to move into a receivership agreement with the Hotel Northland. Those in favor of the project say this should get the subcontractors paid. When we're trying to attract people to our city, whether they be developers, whether they be a general workforce, or whoever they may be, there are very few communities in the state of Wisconsin that can say that they just invested $220 million into themselves. One of the leaders, Octagon Finance, says these contingencies are in line with their plan. Also discussed at the meeting was the removal of the 9-11 monument. The council agreed to take down the deteriorating memorial, which has significant cracks and errors. But the original beam, which is from the Twin Towers, will stay. It's going to be moved during a special service next month on September 11th. Coming up here live at 6, preparing for disaster. Airport officials in Green Bay take part in a drill to ensure your safety in case of an emergency. Plus, welcome to the fair. What to expect this year as gates open tonight for the Brown County Fair.
You're connected to NBC 26 News at 6 with Stacey Engebretson, Chief Meteorologist Cameron Moreland, and Sports Director Charlie Sakaitis. NBC 26 News at 6, keeping you connected. And now, your NBC 26 Storm Shield forecast with meteorologist Michael Fish. Thanks a lot for being with us tonight. Still feels a little bit like summer, right? I mean, we have the humidity. It's out there. Dew points in the middle 60s to upper 60s. We've been seeing that as well today. The only thing saving a lot of us right now is Lake Michigan because the wind's out of the east, keeping us a little bit cooler. 74 degrees, not that bad. Uh, as far as precipitation, though, we've got something on the way like you can't tell, right? It's a low pressure, another one heading right for Wisconsin. You see the swirl in the atmosphere and out ahead of it, these little bands of some showers and a couple of embedded thunderstorms. These are not severe and they're going to slowly start working their way into parts of our area. They're already getting pretty close to like Marquette, Green Lake counties, Fond du Lac. We'll see if they try to hold together as they work their way to the north. That would be for the evening and then behind that for the later evening hours. So we'll be tracking that on through. Here's a look at Skycast, see if things kind of line up. Kind of do, and we're going to watch this batch of showers and thunderstorms work its way to the north as we head through the night. Is this a big rainmaker? We'll talk more about that coming up. Let's talk about temperatures as well. Uh, so far today, 77 in Green Bay, and look around us, we got 78 in Minneapolis. Now, the warm front's here, and you can see to the south of it, it's a lot warmer too. We got 86 Des Moines, that's what it hit today, 90 in St. Louis. This warm front is not going to make its way up towards us. So it's not going to get that warm, but we're still going to have plenty of humidity. It's here right now, but temperatures aren't too bad. Again, winds coming off the lake, so we definitely are cooler there. 71 Sturgeon Bay, Manitowoc, Sheboygan. Look, you head farther to the west and it warms up. Wapak is sitting at 78, Oshkosh 75, 75 in Appleton. The temperatures aren't too bad, but again, that rain is getting closer and closer from the south. And the other thing, you know, maybe it's a little bit uncomfortable out there as well, because we do have the dew points middle 60s right now. And look around. I mean, we've got 68 for a dew point. That's uncomfortable. In Minneapolis, 70 in Chicago. It's all around us, and that's our air mass for tonight and tomorrow. You're going to notice the humidity, that's for sure. Hey, it's still summer, right? So here's a look at satellite and radar. We've got this low pressure, like you can't tell. But again, we're going to keep the warm front to the south, which is fine. That will keep our storms that they move through pretty much sub-severe. When I say sub-severe, I'm not talking about a widespread severe weather outbreak with these. But again, if you hear some rumbles of thunder as they move through, don't be surprised. And this whole thing going to slowly track through the state as we head through tonight and through tomorrow as well. So these on and off showers and thunderstorms. Here's a look at Skycast at the wider view. Here's a look at 10. There's kind of a main batch working its way into the area, moving on through as we head through the midnight, through the late night hours. And then it works its way to the north where it will be pretty showery as we head towards tomorrow morning and a little less activity to the south. But with a little daytime heating with that low pressure in the area, we're going to fire things back up. You see them kind of scattered about. It's not an all day rain tomorrow, but still scattered showers and thunderstorms as we head through the day. And as we go into tomorrow night, that scattered shower and thunderstorm activity slowly works its way on out of here. And by Friday morning, we should be OK. As far as the rain forecast, we're going to kind of take a generalization here. We see a lot of blue on the map, so let's take a look at the legend. That means maybe around an inch of rain. If you get caught under a couple more storms, that would mean just a little bit more. But tonight, though, again, showers and thunderstorms developing. They're getting close to our southwest counties, 58 degrees. Again, not going to be an all night thing. As far as tomorrow, not an all day thing either. Scattered showers and thunderstorms. It's going to be a humid day. Here's one more look at that batch of rain getting closer and closer to our southwest counties. Now here's a look at your extended forecast again. Main batch of rain going to move on through tonight, then scattered tomorrow. It's going to be a humid day, kind of a break on Friday. And right now, Cassandra, the weekend does not look to be a wash, but I'm still holding on to just a chance. Now it's a smaller chance of a shower in the morning on Saturday. But if you like summer, this is your weekend. Yes, this again. looks beautiful. Yeah, so good timing on this. We'll take the rain, I guess, then tonight, mm -hmm. tomorrow, as long as we can have a better weekend, as right? As long as our weekend looks good, I'm okay with it. All right, this. sounds good. All right, thanks, Fish. Yeah. Tonight on NBC 26 Live at 10, more than two decades after Tom Monfiles was murdered at a Green Bay paper mill, a new book is released about the convicted killers and their next steps for appeal. Plus, dentists in Northeast Wisconsin with military backgrounds giving back to veterans in need of care. This year, a first for the Salute to Smiles program in our NBC 26 Cares. Let's still ahead here, live at 6 after the break, getting ready for crisis. Green Bay Airport officials working to make sure you are safe when emergencies breaks out. And the gates are open. A look at all the attractions from this year's Brown County Fair. 
Welcome back. First responders preparing for the worst case scenario today. The staff at Green Bay's Austin Straubel International Airport took part in a full scale emergency airport disaster drill this morning. The drill is required by the FAA every three years. Now the goal of the mock disaster is to familiarize the staff with current standard operating procedures that might need to be reviewed. You don't want to wait until an actual crisis occurs to see if your plans and procedures are actually working. Following today's drill, there will be an evaluation from all participating agencies and a final review will take place to discuss strong points and areas where improvements could be made. The Brown County Fair is kicking off in De Pere today. Food, rides and fun are going to be featured at the five day event. Tonight is the annual demo derby and fireworks to kick off the fair, but there are also new shows like the alligator show, which is educational for kids. The fair usually sees 35,000 people come through every year. It's a great family event. We feel it's affordable. The gate admission includes your parking and includes the unlimited carnival rides and all of our activities. On Saturday, the fair is free for veterans. Purple Heart recipients and disabled vets will be honored in a special ceremony. Packers News Now, Lambeau Field in the running to host World Cup games. If the U.S. hosted the tournament, it's falling short. Packers officials say Lambeau would not be able to host soccer matches because the stadium is not able to accommodate a regulation sized soccer field. Despite not meeting the requirements, Packers officials say they are looking into other potential opportunities to be part of the World Cup process. Well, sometimes having a familiar background is all two players really need to form a bond. How Devontae Adams and Kevin King are working together next in sports. And now, NBC 26 Sports with sports director Charlie Sakaitis. Welcome back to the show. Today's Packers practice in the high heat lasted two hours and 35 minutes. It ended with a Devontae Adams highlight reel touchdown catch that looked midseason in form. Even after the final whistle blew, though, Adams had more work to do. Packers reporter Aaron Nagler captured this photo of Devontae Adams and rookie cornerback Kevin King working on one-on-one -on -one drills after practice, fine-tuning their game. In fact, these two have been matching up in head-to-head -head a lot the past few days. Both King and Adams are Bay Area boys bonding over the West Coast here in the frozen tundra. Entering his fourth NFL season, Adams says working with aggressive corners like King during camp helps him improve the finesse of his attack on defensive backs. On the contrary, first-year pro Kevin King finds ways to improve his game when challenging against Adams, practice and even post-practice making perfect. We're from the same area, so we had kind of a, a connection coming in. I know who he, who he was um, in college and, uh, you know, vice versa. So a um, little bit of a barrier connection and, you know, he feels comfortable talking to me, obviously, and trying to pick my brain about things, and I do the same with him. And He's one of, if not the best in the league at what he does, especially off the line. You know, as much work as I can get with him, the better, you know, so and he's, you know, he, he's real willing to work with me. And so I think he, he you know, he's, he sees it in me, too. So, you know, it's kind of like a, a little battle. He's a really good corner uh, as far as, you know, playing aggressive, like kind of like how, how House is. So um, the more he can pick up from the veteran guys and and uh, get reps, the more we can get out of the practice, the better off we'll both be. Now let's transition to baseball. The Brewers hosting the Pirates for a day game this afternoon. The National League rivals both looking to climb the NL Central standings. The crew starting to put a little run together here. Winners of three straight entering this game. Trailing 4-0 early, but the Brewer bats have been hot of late, especially this one. Keon Broxton with a solo job to lead off the frame. And the guys in the bullpen, well, they seem to like it. Then with a man on, one-time Pirate, current Brewers second baseman, Neil Walker comes through with a get-gone effort of his own. Milwaukee pulls within a run 4-3 contest. The pen still up, then ahead to the seventh. He hit a home run last night, hit a home run earlier in this game, and he hits another one here. Keon Broxton is dialed in right now, folks. Two-run bomb, and we're all square at 5-5, which takes us to the eighth. The crew again trailing, but Manny Pena says that's just about enough of that. Gone. 
you get a home run, you get a home run, everybody gets a home run. This one good for a pair. The Brewers take the lead and hang on to win 7-6. They now trail the Cubs by a single game in the standings. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the sports. We'll be right back. Still ahead, we're going to get one final look at your forecast. We have a hot, humid day right here in Northeast Wisconsin. Welcome back. Time to check in now with John Erickson, host of the Now Wisconsin, to find out what's on tap. What's coming up tonight, John? Well, Cassandra, usually it's just for kids, but now for adults, too. A new summer camp adventure that is selling out across the country. It's a story you'll only see on the Now Wisconsin coming right up, Cassandra. And right now feels still like summer. Summer it camp, still perfect does. timing. Yes, I know. We still have plenty of humidity out there, but I am watching rain getting closer and closer to our southwest county. So as the night goes on, this starts to develop. Tomorrow's going to be humid with scattered storms. Tonight, again, a couple more storms moving through. A break on Friday. Real slim threat of a shower now on Saturday. Most of the weekend, feeling like summer. But so what you're saying is tomorrow when the football games happen, I might want to bring the poncho out? Definitely poncho yeah. weather. <laughs> High school football ponchos. The time for it. Thanks so much for connecting with us. We'll see you again at 10. Have a great night. Good evening, I'm John Erickson. Welcome to the Now Wisconsin. We begin here today with what I call the total eclipse of the heart. While many of us are getting ready to experience that total solar eclipse for the first time on Monday, for one man it is becoming routine, but that doesn't make it any less special. The Now's Kumasi Aaron talks with the eclipse chaser. This is a newspaper from Aruba. David Barron can still remember watching the total eclipse on the sands of Aruba. So I went down there not sure what I would experience, and it just changed my life. On a rooftop in Germany. That's Munich during the total eclipse. <laughs> Looks like nighttime, but that was the middle of the afternoon. There was 